Hey guys, welcome back, and I'm excited you're here. Have you ever felt kind of stagnant in your life? Like when you get home, you just want to procrastinate everything, or you don't feel motivated spiritually, or maybe you just turn on the TV and watch TV. Do you have addictions to pornography, or video games, or just being comfortable in general? Well, I recently came upon Exodus 90, and what Exodus 90 is, is a really awesome program that's kind of changed my life. So. Stay tuned and I will be talking a little bit more about that and how it could motivate you to be a better man and a better dad. My life lesson of the week is really, have you ever felt plateaued? Have you ever felt unmotivated? Have you ever felt like, God, what's next? Well, when you go to pray, pray over and over. Just pray, God, what's next? Where do you want me to move? God, what's next? Where do you want me to move? What is Exodus 90? Exodus 90 is a program that you go over 90 days and you give into these three pillars that they have, prayer, asceticism, and fraternity. And you go through these 90 days as if you're going through the desert. And the idea is that you are praying holy hours every day, you're praying in the morning, you're doing a nightly exam, you are spending more time in contemplative prayer, which contemplative prayer is basically silencing yourself so that God can speak to you. And it's different than meditative prayer. It's different than vocal prayer. Uh, it's just something you kind of practice at too as well. The second pillar in Exodus 90 is asceticism. And what that is, is you are giving into these acts that are emptying yourself and they are uncomfortable and they are pushing you to your limits. Things like taking cold showers and exercising three days a week, which can be uncomfortable for a lot of people. And you're doing these things to open yourself up to what God has to you. You might think of Monty Python, the Holy Grail, where they're going around banging their heads on the boards. But really it's more than that and it's a lot deeper than that. When you deprive yourselves of things that you want and things that maybe you feel like you need, you are putting yourself in a position that's vulnerable. And when you're in that vulnerable state, you're opening yourself up to God and to what he has to pour out to you. And you're saying to yourself, I'm not enough, I need help. I need help from God. If you guys haven't done it already, subscribe below and comment uh, if you'd like and like the video. The third thing is fraternity, and what fraternity is, is you have this group of guys that you do your exodus with. The creators say that you're not actually doing Exodus 90 unless you're doing all three, prayer, asceticism, and fraternity. So fraternity is you meet with these guys weekly, and then you have an anchor that you check in with daily. And during this time, you're kind of holding each other accountable, and you're motivating each other, and you're going through it together, but you're transforming yourself individually and you're transforming the church, you're transforming your family, you're transforming everyone around you because you are emptying yourself and you're pushing yourself to your limits and you're opening yourself up to God. Do not quit on me, you keep going. It hurts. I know it hurts, you keep going. So how was I introduced to Exodus 90? It came up in my life kind of out of nowhere and it was somewhat of a new program at the time and I was really interested in it, but I lived in Texas in a small town and I had no friends. I had no friends the entire few years I was there. And so I tried to do it and I got the program and I got involved in it, but really it wasn't Exodus 90 because I didn't have fraternity. So really what I did was I attempted to do it on my own, which is kind of a sense of pride involved in that, which is one of the things you're fighting when you're doing Exodus 90s. You're fighting that pride and you're fighting that fear. But I did it nonetheless, and I went into the asceticism and the prayer, and I tried to do that as best I could, but eventually I failed, and I stopped around day 70, 80, because I just couldn't do it anymore. And that's kind of a testament to me about finding a good Catholic community and being involved with the men there, and doing this program fully. Why did I do it? I did it because of a lot of reasons. So there were times when my wife was leading the family and everything. She was m recommending going to Holy Hour. She still does this. She, she has all the great ideas, which is amazing. But she asks us to pray more. She wants uh, to pray with the kids more. She wants to do all these things. She wants to start a daily rosary. 
it's not that she shouldn't be doing that, but it's that I should be doing that as well. I should be leading the family to a holier place, and I should be leading the family to Christ. And I'm not doing that when I'm seeking comfort and when I'm seeking myself, to please myself, I guess. As a dad of two little ones, I'm completely exhausted by the end of the day when we're all together because they always need to be watched and because we do have a lot of fun and so that can take all the energy out of me as well. At the end of the day, what I find myself constantly doing is going to the same convenient things. I will watch TV each night with my wife. I will drink a beer every single night if it's been a long day or if I'm tired. I will go to video games. I will just try and seek comfort in my life. And that is nice. It's comfortable, but that's not what we're called to do. And that's not what I'm called to do. I'm not called to a lazy sit down on the couch and watch TV life. So there were a few other things. I wanted this not so blurry vision of my future with Christ. And I didn't, I couldn't see my sins. I couldn't see, I'm, I'm just asking myself, God, what's next? It was just draining to me knowing that I'm not making progress spiritually because that's the foundation of my family and it's the foundation of my life. Another important thing is that I want to grow closer to other men and I wasn't going to do that watching TV every night. I wasn't going to do that staying at home. I needed to get out there and push myself. So one night I thought, hey, let me do Exodus 90. I know some guys here now and I might as well ask them. If they say no, they say no, that's fine. But at least I can say I tried. So I sent a text out to these guys that honestly I barely knew, but I was introduced to them and we were on this big group text and we people would often go out and invite us to breweries and things like that, but I never usually went because I was, I was busy or I was watching TV. So I sent a text out and actually I got two other guys to say yes, so I was excited. And then my wife has this friend and I invited her husband. He said yes, so I was stoked and we set it up. It was kind of... It started on a Monday and we got immediately involved and it was awesome. I was so excited. So that's kind of how I got started on this Exodus 90. This meshing of different personalities and these and just being with other Catholic dads or other Catholic men, you're increasing your virtues, your leadership skills, your your hunger for holiness and you can kind of use that competitive attitude that men typically have and be competitive to be holier but in a good way. And fortunately, all of this comes out of the Exodus 90. So why would you do it? When I opened my video, I talked about the different things like addictions and uh, comfort things that you do in your life. If you find yourself asking to yourself, what, what am I doing with my life? Where's my direction? I, I have no sense of direction. That's a sign that you need to do something drastic. And not drastic like uh, dye your hair blue or anything like that. But drastic like emptying yourself and going on retreat and opening yourself up to Christ and saying, hey, what do I need to do? Have you ever been on a retreat and wondered afterwards, like, how long is this retreat high going to feel? Uh, I heard that question a lot after retreats, and it's usually kind of one of the closing talks is they say, hey, you're not going to have this retreat high forever, but you need to take it with you. Really, if you think about it, when you're on a retreat, you're doing things that you do in Exodus 90. You're praying. You're doing stuff that's uncomfortable. At a retreat, you're sleeping in an uncomfortable bed and you're waking up at uncomfortable hours or you're not able to snack all the time and things like that. In Exodus 90, it's pretty much the same thing, except you don't have to give up your bed, so that's nice. And what I would say is that you should do it because it's not only an amazing way to kind of quiet down in life and get rid of these things or to back away from them for a while to kind of refocus and clarify what you're going to do in your future. We're called to back away from the world and then to look forward to the future in Christ. So Exodus 90 has been super hard in the past when I did it alone and it's been pretty hard now because I think the hardest thing for me is no sweets and uh, cold showers. But uh, if you guys want more information on it, visit the Exodus 90 website at Exodus90.com or there's an app for it, uh, which you get a, I believe it's a seven day free trial if you wanna join in on uh, one of the exoduses that occur throughout the year. Originally it was created for seminarians and priests to kind of battle their addictions, pornography, video games, things like that. And they found that it was so effective that 
uh, it kind of blew up and as more lay people did it and more priests and seminarians did it, it was just such a great experience that it was found to be so effective. What are some things that you guys are holding on to that might be distracting you from life? Like maybe there's things in my life that I haven't focused on that are kind of distracting me from the faith. Comment them below and let me know what you think that are things that, that you do every day that maybe you don't notice that you're doing, but that could be keeping your life so busy that you don't have time to pray or you don't have time to do other things. Exodus 90 has been so hard, but my family needs me, my church needs me, my country needs me, everyone needs me to act like a man and to become a virtuous person. My hope for you guys is that you take this video and you grow from it and you look into Exodus 90 and you say, hey, how could this change my life? How could this make me holier? Ask yourself the question, what are you willing to sacrifice for God? Thanks for coming by, guys. Uh, be sure to uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for more videos that will be coming out soon. So uh, God bless, and you guys have a great week. Bye.